So my name is Tara King. I am a Lynn Recovery coach here, and I am also a physical therapist. I've specialized in the pelvic floor over my career, and I became a pain recovery coach because I have my own pain recovery journey and found this work to be extremely, extremely like life-changing to say the absolute least. And I also just saw so many patients over the years that just weren't getting helped by the traditional model of physical therapy. And in healing myself um, and my whole own journey with chronic pain, pelvic pain, I found methods that I just wanted to be able to share. And it wasn't necessarily appropriate for the physical therapy setting. So I found Lynn and I found pain recovery coaching and I love it. So that's what I do now. That's where I'm here from. Uh, and today you are here for an end of the year meditation together. So we'll start with our kind of end of the year meditation, honoring our pain journey, our journey as human beings over the year. It'll end with a compassion meditation. And then we're going to do a winter solstice ritual. This is something I've done with my family on the winter solstice for a few years now, and we all love it. And we'll finish off by sharing a few things in the chat from that ritual together. And the last five minutes will be some question and answer about Lynn, because I know folks come with some questions. And I'll answer what I can. And Hunter, our uh, beautiful, wonderful sales rep, will stay on afterwards to answer any questions not answered. So if you didn't hear me earlier, piece of paper and a writing utensil or a notes app on your phone. And um, we're not going to monitor the chat during this. I ask that you save all questions or comments towards the end so that we can all just be present in a meditation together and not be wondering what's going on in those beautiful purple boxes in the chat. So put that aside for now. Questions will get answered at the very end. And let's begin. So there's no special position you need to be in, but just be in a position that makes you comfortable, whatever that might be. It can be standing and swaying. It can be walking. It can be sitting like I am or laying down. And I'll have my eyes closed. You're invited to close your eyes if you like as well. First, just feeling the flow of breath in your body. Not trying to do anything special with it. Not trying to make any particular judgments about it. Just allowing yourself to be breathed here as we settle in. Whether you're sitting, standing, laying down, walking, feel where your body is in contact with the earth. And it may be through a chair, to the floor, to the house, to the ground, but just kind of imagine all the layers that are between you and the earth. And feeling yourself held and so supported by all the layers beneath you. Literally, like how incredible is it that gravity and the ground beneath you are just perfect to allow you to just be here, not floating away, not sinking down, but just perfectly held. Mm -hmm. This meditation together is a reflection to honor the journey we've been on over the past year. For all of us who've been on a pain journey, time can feel crazy sometimes. It can feel like it goes in circles. It can feel like sometimes we're so long, whereas others are like, where did the time even go? They're so short. Kind of imagine time over the last year as this, as this drawing of your journey. Maybe it looks like squiggle spiraling circles. Maybe it looks like a graph 
Some lines up, some lines down. And we're not judging what this line drawing looks like. We're just noticing it. Like, wow, so much has occurred. Looking back on that timeline of this past year, like little shining lights, I invite you to notice all the moments that you had of determination. And I know you had them because you're here at this webinar right now. And then I want you to notice all the moments where you did not give up on yourself. Adding more lights on that timeline. And then I invite you to see all the moments that you advocated for yourself. And I know you have, because if you're here, you've been on a pain journey. And that means an incredible determination, not giving up on yourself and advocating for yourself. And people who are on the pain recovery journey are the strongest, most determined people that I know. So see in your timeline of this past year, all the moments where you cared for yourself, where you didn't take, I don't know, for an answer, but you kept going. And even if you're like, I don't see any, you're here now. Here's one. See this moment at this webinar together as a light on that timeline. Looking back at this past year, choose out anything that you would like to honor in yourself. It'd be a trait that you really just love about you. Or even a trait that pisses you off about you. But you know what? It's kind of great. <laughs> now in our head, we might have this visualization of some kind of timeline with these lights of these moments of determination, not giving up, trusting ourselves, advocating for ourselves. And imagine in your mind's eye that you're bowing down to each of those moments. It could be like bowing to a queen or to some sort of religious figure or to a tree whatever you like to bow to, but here you're bowing to yourself. Here you're bowing to all these beautiful moments in your journey where you showed up for you. Today is one of them. Humbly being in awe of all that you've been this year. If your mind slips right to all you haven't been, psh, leave that. Because there's so much that you have been, so many ways you have showed up. There will always be the coulda, woulda, shouldas. And let them fade like ripples on the water. And the further they go out from you, the less you're able to see the ripples. We'll move in towards a compassion meditation here. This is a meta meditation. And you repeat the phrases that I say to yourself, imagining that you're blessing yourself with each of these phrases. And I'll say it with the word I in it. But know that this is my blessing to you. May I be safe. May I be happy and peaceful. 
May I be strong and healthy. May I be free. May I be vibrant. And you could say these phrases out loud to yourself if you're in a place to do so after I say them to you. We'll repeat them. May I be safe. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be strong and healthy. May I be free. May I be vibrant. May I be safe. May I be happy and peaceful. May I be strong and healthy. May I be free. May I be vibrant. If there's any other words you'd like to bless yourself with, you can do so now or go back to a phrase that you liked and repeat it a few more times here. Whenever you said all the phrases that are popping up for you here. And come back to that feeling of just being supported by the earth. Perfectly between space and ground. Just the right crazy equations of physics to keep you rooted and not floating away, not sinking down but perfectly held in space. And I'd like to finish our meditation here. With one of my favorite poems from Mary Oliver. And it's called The Journey. One day, you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, Though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Allowing yourself to just be breathed for a few more breaths here. Taking one longest breath in and out. Allow your eyes to flutter open. And we'll move into a little ritual now together. So grab your piece of paper, writing utensil, and paper is really wonderful because one of these is going to get torn up unless you really love deleting an iPhone or an any phone note, really make it ceremonial in the deletion of it. 
Otherwise, split your piece of paper into two. And today's winter solstice, December 21st. So it is the day of the shortest light of the year and of the longest dark of the year. So it's a wonderful day to ceremonially leave behind what you'd like into the darkness and to invite in what you'd like for the longer days to come. So first, we'll choose and write down on your piece of paper what you would like to leave behind. Something may have come up in your meditation and reflecting on your year, either a phrase, a word, a way of being, something that you would like to leave behind into this darkest night of the year. Like, ah, the darkness can envelop this and I do not need this anymore. Write that down on one of your sheets of paper now. And then on your other sheet of paper, please write down what you'd like to bring in in the longer days to come. Starting today for the next six months, there'll be more light every day. So what is it that you'd like to fill the light with? What is it you'd like to fill your days with? And try to avoid answers like less pain or no of something. Instead, make it more affirmative, something you want to bring in and write that down. Now, take your sheet of paper where you wrote what you'd like to leave behind. I'll do it with a fake tag here (laughs) and crumple it up in your hands just take it and really crumple it like you're half lifing it over and over and over and over until it gets very 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 small You have an invitation after this to either tear this up or to burn it on a candle and then put it in the sink. Not trying to do anything too intense here, but I really invite you to burn these little pieces here. You could also flush them down the toilet if you don't have any candles. So three options, tear it up, throw it out, flush it down the toilet or burn it. And then I'd like you to take the note or the piece of paper of what you'd like to bring into the longer days to come and place it over your heart here. When we put our hand on our heart, it releases the same chemicals inside of us as though we're giving ourselves a hug. So allow this little hug to come into yourself. Eyes can close for a moment. And imagine that you're planting this very intention into every cell of your body. The beautiful cells of your body, every single one of which turns over every seven years. So amazing. Literally transformation goes on inside of you all day, all the time. And so as there are days of more sunlight to come, plant inside of you here like a little seed, what it is that you would like to fill the light with, what it is you'd like to fill you with. Imagine that each breath or each second that you have here just plants that seed further and further inside of you. And you could feel that seed of an intention going all the way down into the earth beneath you. 
maybe through the same layers that we started with, going down through a chair or the floor, all the way down until it finds soil. Intention brought through your body, through your heart, all the way down to the ground. Connecting to all that's around you that will support you in this intention. First of which, just being the earth beneath you. And allowing your eyes to come open. I invite you to place that piece of paper somewhere special to you. It can be a sock drawer where you might find it later this year when you need it next to your bed if you'd like to see it all the time or on a bathroom mirror but find a place and after this go ahead and plant it there so that you have it for you and i'd like to open up the chat now for a minute for people to share what it is that they would like to bring in in the longer days to come you're open to sharing your intention Confidence, I love it. Self-acceptance, yeah. Joy and happiness. Courage. Patience and ease. More self-care time. Calm. Joy. Ample family and playtime. Yes, let's play. Introspection and clarity. Joy, freedom, safety. How does it feel to hear all, the, hear all these words from other people? I feel like I'm just getting blanketed with good wishes right now, even though it's for yourself. Comfort and slowing down. Yeah. Freedom. Love. Breath. Love, joy, satisfaction, art, connection, and contribution. More challenging fears with confidence. Health, joy, and affirmation. Deeper friendships. Yeah. Honor, respect, prosperity, purpose. Ah, oh, can we imagine a world where we're all planting these things all the time? Yes. Connection. Lightness with ease. Connection. I'm hoping we feel some connection just in being here right now. And some purpose. Bob Marley, I love it. <laughs> More energy and happiness. Following my dreams instead of being afraid. Oh, I have goosebumps. Yay. So take those intentions. Even take the blessing of others' intentions and just wash it over you. Planted in your heart here. It's been an honor to get to share this time with you. And I feel each of you and your intentions. And I know that you will bring them about this year because you've set the intention. So if anybody has uh, questions about what we do here at Lynn, how this fits in at all, I know some of my members have been here. Um, other folks are interested and in trying to see how this fits into a pain journey at all. So I'm here to answer, and then Hunter will stay on and answer anything that hasn't been answered. What do I recommend for moments of fear? Ooh, that's a great question. Hmm. We had a big talk about this in our Coach Pod meetings today. Many thanks. Um, first and foremost, hand on the heart, telling yourself that you got you. Literally just that imaginary or even real cellular hug you're giving yourself. And a breath. We can't cognitively think our way out of why we actually shouldn't be scared if we're so heightened that no calming thoughts can get through. So first and foremost, just a little self-compassion. Sharing with others, connection, shared experience, sharing what it is you might be afraid about. and like pain, fear is a felt sensation in the body. So can you be with that sensation without judging it as something bad? 
Maybe it's just another sensation that's coming and going, just like happiness does. Fear is just another sensation that can come and go from your body. And then I'd say you can lean on your limb coach to certainly talk with many people about moments of fear. What role does PT play with mind-body syndrome? Um, So mind-body syndrome is one way of saying primary pain or neuroplastic pain. I would say a physical therapist's role is to recognize when somebody's pain presentation is outside of the timeline of tissue healing. So there's very specific timelines of when we expect tissues to heal. Uh, When somebody's had pain much longer than that tissue healing timeline, there's something going on that is also contributing to their pain presentation. It's a physical therapist's role to recognize that and to either take a different route with the patient in front of them or to refer to somebody who can take a different route, like a chronic pain recovery coach or like Lynn. Um, Also, in physical therapy, we want to be using fear reducing language all the time things that increase fear increase pain things that increase safety decrease pain so physical therapists play a very vital role in helping to create a sense of safety healing and recovery in the body just through how they speak also it's shown now that manual therapy like cracks and massages and anything else done to the body is actually a mechanism for a neurophysiological reset, meaning that we're not actually putting a bone back in place or making tissue relax, but instead, hands on the body, a pop in a joint, sends the brain a signal of, oh, I can release that area, or, oh, something new is going on there. I can relax a little bit or send different signals, non-pain signals down, and That is what manual therapy is doing. When physical therapist treatments can be seen in that light, they could be totally helpful if you understand that this is just a neurophysiological reset. It's giving my body a chance to say, oh, okay, I don't need to hold on so much there. But you're not out of place and you're not broken and you didn't do anything wrong. So PTs have a very, very key role to play in explaining what the actual impacts of what they're doing is on the body and then also in the language they use and how those both can contribute to mind-body syndrome. Ooh, I ran over. I'll answer one more. Was there a turning point in my recovery journey? Yeah, it was when I realized that I had primary pain, even though I thought that it was totally from this disease that I have. Um, So building an an evidence list around um, how my symptom behaviors actually weren't from what I thought they were from. And they actually instead were really learned triggers to very specific things in my environment, like time of day, caffeine, red wine, chocolate. I suddenly realized, oh my goodness gracious, I'm so much freer than I ever thought. I had no idea that I actually didn't need to protect myself from dangers all day, every day. So it's been so great being with all of you. I appreciate each of you.